This is section 9.4 about linear measurement. First of all, let's talk about U.S. units of length. The U.S. system of measurement uses the inch, foot, yard, and mile to measure length. So here are some U.S. units of length. 12 inches equals 1 foot, 3 feet equals 1 yard, and 5,280 feet equals 1 mile. And notice that we have the abbreviations for each unit here. Inches is IN, feet is FT, yards is YD, and miles is MI. Now if we want to convert from one unit of length to another, we're going to use something called a unit fraction. And that a unit fraction is a fraction that equals one. So here are some examples. If we look at 12 inches over one foot, since these two are equal, since 12 inches is one foot, then we could do this fraction in either direction and it would equal one. So this would be, these two would be unit fractions. The same thing with feet and yards, since three feet equals one yard, then we can write one over the other in either direction and get one. We can also do this with feet and miles. Since 5,280 feet equals one mile, we can write a unit fraction either direction so that we get one. Now to use these unit fractions, what we're going to do is when we're converting from one unit to another, we want to multiply by a unit fraction that relates the two units that we're converting. And the unit fraction we want to use should be written so that the units we're converting to are in the numerator and the original units are in the denominator. Here's an example. Let's say that we want to convert 60 inches to feet. That means we want to use a unit fraction that relates inches and feet. And let's think about what we know about inches and feet. We know that 12 inches is the same as one foot, so we have two unit fractions we could use. We could either use this one or one foot over 12 inches. Both of these two relate inches and feet. Now we have to pick the one that will work in our situation. So again, we want to have in the numerator the units that we want to convert to. Since we're trying to convert two feet, that means we want to have feet in the numerator. So that would mean we would want to pick this fraction. We have the units we're converting to in the numerator and the original units in the denominator. So that's the one that's going to work. All right, so here's our calculation. We have 60 inches. We're actually going to write that as a fraction. So we have 60 inches over one. Then here's the unit fraction that we decided to use is one foot over 12 inches. And then we're just multiplying straight across and notice what happens here. And the reason that we used the unit fraction this way is because we can actually cancel out the units. Since we were starting with inches, then that was in the numerator here. That's why we wanted it to be in the denominator here so that it would cancel out. And the units that are left are feet and that's what we're converting to. So now we just multiply straight across, so we have 60 times 1 and 1 times 12. So we end up with 60 feet over 12, and if we simplify that, we end up with 5 feet. All right, let's do some more examples. If we want to convert 8 yards to feet, then again we want a unit fraction that relates yards and feet. So if we think about this, we know that one yard equals three feet. So we'd have two unit fractions. We're just taking these two things that are equal and putting one over the other. This would be one unit fraction or the other direction would be this way. Now we have to pick which one of these two will work in our situation. Since we're starting with yards and converting to feet, that means we want yards to be on the bottom and we want feet to be on the top. So this is the unit we're converting to that we want to be on the top. 
and our original unit, the one that we're starting with, is what we want to be on the bottom. All right, so we've picked out this as our unit fraction. So now we're going to take our eight yards and we're going to go ahead and write that in a fraction form. So we're going to put it over one. We're going to multiply it by our unit fraction. And remember the reason that we can do this is that a unit fraction means that it actually equals one since our two quantities are equal. So here's the unit fraction we're using, three feet over one yard. And here again, the reason we do it this way is that now we can cancel out these units, the yards, and the unit we're left with is feet. Now if we multiply straight across, we have 8 times 3 feet. On the bottom, all we have left is a 1. So all we have to do now is multiply the 8 and the 3, and we get 24 feet. Since there was a 1 there, we can just write this as a whole number. So that means that 8 yards is equal to 24 feet. All right, let's convert 120 inches to yards. Now this one, we didn't have this unit fraction in our list, but we can figure one out. So we want a unit fraction that relates inches and yards. We would know that 36 inches would equal one yard. So we could make up a unit fraction that would relate these two. Again, since we know these two are equal, we can actually come up with two unit fractions. We can either put the 36 inches on the top or we can put the one yard on the top and the 36 inches on the bottom. Either way, since these two are equal quantities, this equals one. Now we want to pick the right one for this situation. Since we're starting with inches, we want that to be on the bottom. So that's going to be here. So those are our original units and we're converting two yards, so we want that to be in the numerator. 120 inches, again we're going to write that over one, and then this is the unit fraction we picked, so now we have one yard over 36 inches. Now again, our units cancel out, that's how we know that we've picked the right unit fraction, and we have 120 times one yard on the top and 1 times 36 on the bottom. Now let's do a little bit of factoring here so that we can write this in simplest form. 120 is 12 times 10 and 36 is 12 times 3. And notice I'm not writing the ones anymore. So we can cancel out a 12 and that gives us 10 thirds of a yard. Now normally with US measurements, we would write these as mixed numbers. So if we want to write this as a mixed number, remember to do that we take the 10 and divide by the 3, that would give us 3 with a remainder of 1. So for our mixed number, we get our whole number part from our quotient, so we'd have three, and then the remainder is what goes on the numerator of our fractional part. Our denominator is the same as the original denominator. So to write this as a mixed number, we would end up with three and a third yards. All right, now let's convert three miles to feet. So we want to relate miles and feet. Well, we would know that 5,280 feet is equal to one mile. So we, again we can write two different unit fractions. We can either put the feet on top and the miles on the bottom or we can put the miles on the top and the feet on the bottom. Either way this equals one and now we want to pick which one of these is the right one. Since we're starting with miles then we want the miles to be on the bottom and we want to end up with feet, so we want that to be on the top. That means that this is the correct unit fraction to use. All right, so now we're starting with three miles. We're going to put that over one, and we're taking this times our unit fraction. And here again, if we've done this correctly, then our units will cancel out. And so on the top of this, we have 3 times 5,280. 
on the bottom we just have 1. So now we're going to have to multiply 3 times 5,280. That gives us 0 there, 24, so we carry the 2. That makes 8 and 15. So we end up with 15,840 feet. Okay, let's do one more conversion problem. And in this one, since it's written out this way, this is really telling us that we're going to convert to feet. You will see some problems like this in your homework. So that's what it's asking you to do is convert from inches to feet. So that means that the unit fraction we want needs to relate inches and feet. So it's going to be either 12 inches over 1 foot or 1 foot over 12 inches, since each of those relates inches and feet. Now we're starting with inches, so we want that one to be on the bottom, and we're converting to feet, so we want that one on the top. So here's the one we want. Okay, so 89 inches over 1 times 1 foot over 12 inches, and our units cancel out. So now on our the top of our fraction we have 89 times 1 foot. On the bottom we have a 12. Since 12 doesn't go into 89 evenly, what we want to do with this is write it as a mixed number. So for our mixed number, this is going to be our whole number part, is the number of feet. And the number of inches will be the numerator of our fractional part. Okay, so if we divide 89 by 12, then we have 7 with a remainder of 5. That means, again, that our whole number part of our mixed fraction would be 7, and then our numerator would be 5, our denominator would be 12. So we have 7 and 5 twelfths feet, which is the same thing as saying 7 feet 5 inches. So that would make this 7 feet, and that would make that 5 inches. All right, sometimes we have to do operations with units of length. So let's look at doing a couple of these problems. If we're adding 11 feet 3 inches plus 5 feet 10 inches, we can think about this just like adding mixed numbers. So let's write it in a vertical form like this. So we have 11 feet 3 inches plus 5 feet 10 inches. We can add the inches part, so that's going to give us 13 inches, and then we can add the feet part, which gives us 16 feet. Now again, we want to write this in feet and inches, but we want the number of inches to be less than 12. So if we have something like this where our number of inches is more than 12, we're going to convert this to a feet and inches. So 13 inches would be 1 foot plus 1 inch. And again, to get that, we could just divide 13 by 12, and that would give us 1 with a remainder of 1. So this is the same as 16 feet plus 1 foot 1 inch, and that gives us 17 feet 1 inch. Okay, one more problem. A garden is 3 yards long by 6 foot 4 inches wide. What's the total length of fencing needed to completely enclose the garden? Well, if we have a rectangular garden, and we know it's 3 yards long, so we have 3 yards on this side, we have 6 feet 4 inches on this side, then if we want to know the amount of fencing needed to enclose the garden, we're really finding the perimeter. There are two different ways we could do this. We could use our, we could just add up all four sides. So that's one way we could do this. Or we could use the perimeter formula for a rectangle. 
and that was P equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So let's do it that way. Let's make this our length and this our width. So we have P equals 2 times our length, which is 3 yards, plus 2 times our width, which was 6 feet 4 inches. Okay, so 2 times 3 is 6. That gives us 6 yards there. <clears throat> and now when we, when we multiply in this case, let's think about this as being actually 6 feet plus 4 inches. And a long time ago in this class we talked about distributing a number on the outside of parentheses if it's multiplied. We talked about distributing it to each separate thing inside the parentheses. And here's where we can use that. We still have our 6 yards here. So we can distribute that 2 to each of the quantities on the inside. And this, again, is because they're added together. So we can take the 2 times the 6 feet plus the 2 times the 4 inches. That gives us 12 feet, and 2 times 4 is 8 inches. Now, we only have one problem, and that's that we have three different units here. We'd like to get this in just feet and inches instead of yards, feet, and inches. So let's convert the yards. the six yards to feet. And again, we want a unit fraction that relates yards and feet, so we could either use one yard over three feet or three feet oops, over one yard. Since we're starting with yards, we want that one on the bottom. So we're going to use the three feet over one yard unit fraction. Okay, so now our units will cancel out there, and we get 6 times 3 feet. On the bottom we just have a 1, so we don't even have to write that. So that means that 6 yards turns out to be 18 feet. So now, instead of 6 yards here, we have 18 feet, plus 12 feet, plus 8 inches. And now we can add our feet, 18 plus 12 is 30. That gives us a total of 30 feet plus 8 inches, so we could just write it as this way, 30 feet 8 inches. That's the total length of fencing that we would need. Now let's talk about the metric system. When we're talking about units of length in the metric system, our basic one is the meter. A meter is just a little bit longer than a yard. A yard is 36 inches and a meter is approximately 39.37 inches long. And just like in the decimal system, the metric system uses powers of 10 to define the units. The units that we use the most for length are the meter, the millimeter, the centimeter, and the kilometer. And here's a table that you can use that tells you what each of these prefixes are. These are, these are several of the most used ones. And it also gives you some conversions between the two. Now we can use unit fractions to convert in the metric system. But there's actually an easier way because we have powers of 10. Remember when we multiply or divide by powers of 10, we can just move the decimal point. So if we, only, if we know what power of 10 we're using, then we can just move the decimal point and not actually have to use the unit fractions. The best way to remember how to do this is to write our units of length in order from the largest to the smallest. So here we have that. This is a kilometer, hectometer, so here are our units of length. We have a kilometer, hectometer, a decameter, a meter, a decimeter, a centimeter, and a millimeter. These are all written in order from largest to smallest. So for example, if we were going to convert from kilometers to meters, that means we're going three this way, and that means we're going to move our decimal point three places to the right. Here's another example. If we're starting with meters and converting to centimeters, then that means that we would, we're moving from here to here, so we would move our decimal point two units to the right. Okay, so let's use that method to convert 3.5 meters to centimeters. So if we have our listing, we had meters and then centimeters, 
then we had decimeters, and then we had centimeters. So to get from meters to centimeters, we're going two places to the right. And so here's our decimal point moving from here over to here. Let's do some examples. If we want to convert 60 millimeters to centimeters, let's write down part of our listing that involves the centimeters and the millimeters. Okay, so here's centimeters, here's millimeters. So we're starting here and we're going here. That means we're going to move our decimal point one place to the left. So we're going from 60 and we're going to move our decimal point which starts there one place to the left. So that gives us 6.0 centimeters or we could just say 6 centimeters. Now let's convert 34 kilometers to centimeters. For this one we're going to have to write out a little bit more of that listing. Starting here that means we need to go one two, three, four, five places to the right. So if we're starting with 34, here's where our decimal point would be and we're going from there five places to the right. For each one of those we're going to have to add a zero. One, two, three, four, five. Our decimal point ends up there, so we're putting a zero in each one of those places. So we end up with five zeros here. This is in centimeters now. Let's put our commas in the right place. So we end up with 3,400,000 centimeters.